Hi, I'm Dave from Dave and Vince Bike Channel. Today we're going to show you how to oil change on a 2003 Road King. Okay, at the process of warming up the bike and taking it for a ride for a good 15-20 minutes, we get it up on the jack stands to make sure that it's level. Now the first thing we're going to do is take our 5-8 socket and I'll show you where the drain plug is located. The first process is after you're warming the motor up. Underneath on your left hand side of the bike below the primary case you'll see the oil pan. The drain plug is this 5-H directly in the front. Now that we're under the bike the location of the drain plug is right directly in the front of the pan. Put on your 5-H socket it's not on too tight, so don't. It should just be a little, little right twist. Okay, here we go. We got it going down now. Get your oil pan ready. Okay, now it's loose enough to take out by hand. Oil pan. Directly below it, it's approximately three and a half to four quarts. Okay, now we just let that drain. The oil is draining slowly. To the filler cap, remove the filler cap, which will release the air pressure in the motor. you release the oil cap filler plug it comes out a lot quicker that's a good thing because it tells you that your breathe your breather valves on your motor are still good I like using the K&N oil filter it's just a better filter and it's 10 microns uh, so you catch a lot of uh, debris that's coming off your motor and shape I went to AutoZone and found the perfect oil filter wrench remover Never a problem with it, and I've used it probably seven oil changes now, and it works perfect. You don't have to worry about damaging the sensor, and it comes out really nice. Okay, a little trick that I've learned through time, because you have a rubber-mounted motor mount in the front. I cut a piece of plastic off the back of a notebook. This way, I got a groove in it, so when you put it in, it clears the oil filter in the rear. You just do it by sliding underneath and it clears the filter. It clears the wrench. This way the oil will drip into the pan. So what we're going to do is remove the filter. I like taking my 3 8 with a little longer extension to clear the shifter pan. We have the uh, filter wrench onto the filter. We turn. Simply turn. Ease up. So you really have to be careful when you're removing this that you don't damage your sensor. Let the oil filter is loose. On hand tighten. Okay. Now your oil is still going to pour out of here. That's the reason why I have this pan and this makeshift plastic to container to catch the oil for it does not spill onto the front motor mount. Okay, check. Sometimes the O-rings left behind and you don't want to double them up because then you'll get an oil leak when you put the new filter on. So always make sure you check that. Okay, after letting the uh, oil drip freely from the oil filter, remove the plastic wrapping. Okay, now I'm going to spray a rag, I mean brake cleaner, and clean the surface. The better the surface clean, the better the seal will be. Okay, I buy the 
propane and oil filter sealed. Kind of do that because it protects that you never know what could fall inside here and with it being sealed, you know it's going to be a nice, clean, fresh oil filter. We're going to unwrap it. As you can see, there is a rubber O ring on here. That seats up against the back of the moving your uh, cellophane wrapper from the oil filter. What I like to do is I like to add oil into the filter so that you don't get a dry slump. Uh, pump when you when you fire the bike back oil up. into the oil filter to uh, prime the uh, filter itself Now my extra oil I like to take and add a little bit to the top and we'll let that set a few minutes to uh, Soak into the filter now we're going to attach the oil filter to the oil Unit Okay, now this doesn't have to be Gorilla on. Once it makes contact, okay, made contact. Now what I like to do, give it a good wiping down with a little brake clean. And approximately a three quarters turn after hitting stop. Okay, we're pretty tight there, but I'll double check. Yeah, I might have to remove my gloves. Give it a good cranking till it makes seat. Making sure your oil filter is clean. Let it set for a few minutes, let it dry off. I sprayed it with a little brake clean so I could get a good grip on it. The filter has made contact. I like to take an 11 16 wrench. Now the uh, option with the K-Man filter as you can see, they have a nut on the front here. That could give us... There we go. Now it's made filtered. To, to snug it, it doesn't have to be grilled on there because you want to be able to get it back off. And it will swell up once the motor gets warm. See, there's no more oil dripping out of the uh, oil pan. So we're going to proceed on with the next step of uh, filling it back up. First off, we have to put back in the oil plug. Before assembling the plug into the pan, this is a magnet. It catches all little metal fragments. You go ahead and take a look at that. This one looks pretty good. Don't really see no fragments on it. Uh, clean it off. And then clean off the threads. Really good. Now, as you can see, they come with a O-ring. Now, you should replace these at, on every oil change, but if you don't muscle it on and smash it, they're usually good for two or three changes. As we can see, this one's in a fairly good shape, so we're gonna reuse it. Now, what I like to do is clean off the plug. A little brake clean. Make sure it's all nice and clean. Clean the threads off really good. Uh, nylon bristle brush. Usually we'll clean them off with a little brake cleaner. Now we're gonna clean off the oil filter hole. Make sure there's no debris around it. Clean inside it, make sure the threads are somewhat clean. Okay. What I like to do is add a little bit of uh, Teflon tape in the tool, just for a peace of mind that it doesn't leak again. All your oil has dripped out give it a good wipe clean the hole out a little bit make sure there's nothing in there then we put in our plug 
lightly always do it by hand so that you don't strip it if it isn't going in by hand then you do then you're putting it in wrong you're cross threading it one thing you don't want to do is cross thread it i usually tighten it up all the way by hand it calls for i believe it's 18 foot pounds but i really don't use it as long as you uh as long as you make it snug like i said anything on this doesn't have to be gorilla on so don't put a lot of power into it okay smooth easy okay when you feel it make contact tightening up see that pipe thread on there that, that uh, pipe thread on there usually gives it just a little bit of assurance that it's not gonna leak okay here now I have it pressed down so now all I do is just give it a little crank by your finger once it's tight okay like I said, it doesn't have to be on super tight. Just Then I just give it a little pressure down, and you should be fine. Make sure it's clean. Give it a good wiping. You don't want no debris down in there. Remove the plug. Put on. Okay. Set it in the hole. Always look in your manufacturer's recommendation for the amount of oil you want in. Now, I know the Road King takes three and a half quarts to the cold full line. You want to leave, when you're filling it, you want to go halfway, halfway onto the add stick coat because your oil always expands and you don't want to blow no seals out. So, we take our first quart. I usually let it uh, set a minute. Sure hate to waste money. And in fact, I'm using Mobile One. I just prefer it. Uh, the AMS oil is a fine oil. But I'm going down the next in line, which would be the Mobile One Full Synthetic. Okay, that's one quart. Always pour it slowly, you don't want to make a mess. Okay. Now in the beginning, I poured approximately a half of a, half the oil filter on a fill-up. So that leaves us approximately a half quart and hardly takes three and a half quarts for the Road King. Okay, now I'm gonna remove the oil filter, I mean the oil spigot. And I'm just gonna double check my oil, make sure the stick is clean. Let's see what we got here. Plunge it in. Now some of them have the screw in type on the older Harleys and you don't need to, uh, you don't screw those in all the way. Pull out. Let's see where we're at here. It still says I need another cord. This next cord.
give it a wipe. Give it time to settle in there. Push back in. As you notice, the bike is being straight up. You should check your oil straight up on the, uh, have a friend help you or whatever. Okay. Looks like we got a lot in there. So that was one, two, three. And we got a half quart. I usually go three and a half. And where are we at on here? And we're just about right at the half mark. Plus we are exactly right here, which tells us a half a quart, but we have a half a quart inside the uh, oil filter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start the bike up here for a minute and give it a couple minute run and then recheck the oil. Turn on the bike, make sure it's in neutral. Prime switch. After putting and running the bike for a couple minutes after putting your oil in, you just want to double check your oil spout, make sure you got no leaks, none, we look really good here, nothing uh, leaking, so you know the plug is in there correctly. You want to double check your oil filter, make sure there's no leaks, as we can see there's no leaks on the ground under the oil filter, so you're good to go. At the bike is running a couple minutes, we'll go ahead and pull our dipstick and see where we're at on our dipstick. Clean it off so that you can get accurate reading. Sometimes it's a little hard because the oil is so clean. Put in, pull out. Well, according to this, we're about a half a quart low, which is just what we're going to add, a half a quart. Okay, where it says add one quart, but you don't want to fill it up completely. As it says, do not overfill because oil expands once it's in your motor. And leaving a little bit of air gap in there uh, just makes the motor oil flow easier through your heads and back down into your recycling pump. So I would say a half a quart. Just about a half a quart right there. A little bit more. Okay. Okay, now we're up halfway on the stick. That's three and a half quarts on the stick. Now remember we put that other half quart into the oil filter earlier. And that's done, been pumped through and you can see right here, we're right here on the stick. Now what we'll do is we'll take and put it back in. We'll start the bike up, let it run for about five, five minutes, couple minutes, and recheck the oil.
now that the bike has burned approximately four or five minutes, what we're gonna do is go around and recheck the oil while it's warm. Okay, we look pretty good. We're at the half mark. Uh, I'd say oil's not completely up to temperature yet, but I have to say we're probably pretty close. So hard to read. You know, the oil's so clear. Well, right there it goes around. It's right at the half mark. I say we go for a ride, maybe a 10, 15 minute ride, come back and recheck it while it's hot with the bike standing up. And you don't want to be all the way up to the full mark because you always have a chance of blowing the seals. And like I said, you want to. Okay, and that concludes our oil change on the 2003 Road King. A lot of the uh, oil specs for uh, other full dressers are done in the same procedure, but please look at your own your manuals for torque specs and indication of how much fluid and oil you need in. And thanks again.